I can change my name. Hi, Kayla. Hi. Hi. Elliot. Hey, Miss Gearman. What's up? Hey, how are you? Good. How are you? Good to see you. Me too. I'm well. I'm good. Awesome. Uh, are we going to get started 10 after or right now? We'll wait, we'll wait a little bit. Let's just, there's going to be people coming in. So let's just give it a few minutes. Um, Okay, so I think we have all of our alumni with us. Maybe just Aaron, Sal, and then you may just go. Hmm. Hi, Aaron Oliver. Hello. Hi, thanks for being here. How are you? Great. Good to be with you all. Good, thank you. Okay, it's just seven, so let's just wait a few more minutes. No surprise, this is one of the more popular visits. Hi, Emily. Nice to see you. Hi, nice to see you. Hi, Em. Hi. <laughs> I love seeing like old classmates here. <laughs> Hey, Aaron. Hey, hey, how you doing? Hi. Good, nice to see you. Nice to see you too. Are you, are you in Berkeley right now? I thought I passed you on the street like a month ago or something, but I wasn't sure if it was you because of masks. You're not in Berkeley. So. Okay. <laughs> no, I am, I am in Berkeley, but I don't remember seeing you. Co college and Bancroft, right by Strata. So if you were over there a I'm month like, ago. I'm like nope. never over there. <laughs> so, come to Southside. I oh yeah, you. I literally saw you there today. So like, I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, I was literally there, there like for the first in like months. Like I haven't been on like Strata in like literally. No, months. I'm pretty sure you're just lying to me. <laughs> <laughs> I live on North Side, so I don't make it a getting on Strata. Queen behavior. Okay, guys, let's get started. And people still might join, but we might as well. I think get started. Um, we have some a lot of great alumni with us today. So we have Daniela, Elliot, Talia, Aaron, Salomon, Aaron Ordauer, and Emily. Did I miss anybody? I think that's everybody. Um, can Let's just start, I don't know, in order somehow. Um, if you guys could go around and share um, when you graduated from Milken, um, if you're still in college, what year you're in, or when you graduated from college, you know, and, and maybe just say like what you're studying and slash what you're doing now. Let's just kind of start with a general introduction. Daniela, you can kick it off. You're muted. I was muted. Awesome. <laughs> well, hi everyone. Um, my name is Daniela Winger. Um, I graduated from Milken class of 2014 and I graduated from Berkeley at, as a part of the class of 2018. Um, so three years ago from Berkeley, when I was at Berkeley, I was in the business school. Um, so spent two years um, doing the undergrad gen and requirements and then um, got into the Haas School of Business. So if you have any questions about that, I also minored in public policy and did the certificate of entrepreneurship and technology in the College of Engineering. So my experience really spanned business, technology and policy. Um, what am I, do, so since, and what am I doing now? Is that the last question? Yeah. So I am working for a market research company that does work for Instagram. 
and I am soon going to be doing um, more graduate school. So I'm happy to talk about that too and how Berkeley set me up to do more school. Great. Elliot, you're next on my window, so go ahead. Okay, awesome. Uh, what's up, everyone? I'm Elliot. I'm a junior at Cal right now studying econ and data science with a certificate in entrepreneurship and a minor in public policy. Um, yeah, that's about it. If you guys have any questions about life at Cal right now or about consulting or Jewish organizations, I will be glad to answer them. Okay, Talia. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Talia. Um, I'm a junior at Cal. I graduated Milken in 2018. I was an Elliot and Aaron Zalman's class. Um, I am studying poli sci and I'm minoring in history and public policy. Definitely recommend public policy. I kind of convinced Elliot to redo it on his minor today. So I have a lot of good reasons why it's a great minor. Um, and right now I am working at the law school. I uh, am an intern for, or yes, a student assistant for one of their research centers that does um, comparative equality and anti-discrimination law. So, yeah. Great, Erin, um, uh, sound? Yeah, Wait, we can't hear you. This happens on occasion, I have an old computer. Um, hey y'all, I am Aaron. I graduated Milken in 2018. I'm currently a junior studying environmental economics and policy and society and environment and hopefully getting a creative writing minor. Um, I'm currently living in Berkeley at a vegetarian co-op, part of the Berkeley Student Cooperative System. So if you have any in in interest in communal life or co-op life, hit me up. Also about environmental communities. I'm really involved in agroecological farming um, and Berkeley Student Farms. And I also work in publishing with our LitMag. So yeah, any of those fields, hit me up. And I use the he, him pronoun series. Awesome, thank you. Aaron Ordauer. Hi, I'm Aaron Ordauer. I think I'm here to prove that if you graduate from Cal, you can find a job. And uh, I, I, was, I graduated from Milken in 2004 and uh, from Cal in 2008, I studied uh, political science and Spanish at Cal. And I went, I've been working basically in the public sector and public sector adjacent work, working mostly on sustainability and climate change policy since graduating. I also have a master's degree from UCLA in urban planning um, and happy to provide what insight I can. And yes, this is Mrs. Ordauer's son. One of- That's right. <laughs> So do your community service hours, everybody. <laughs> um, Emily? Hi, I'm Emily. Um, I graduated Milken in 2013, and I had a unique trajectory. I actually went straight to USC, and then I transferred to Cal's Hall School of Business after two years um, because Cal was my dream school, and I wasn't going to let it go. Um, at Cal, I studied business there, as I mentioned. And I was really involved in Jewish life, specifically Chabad. Um, and now I work for Facebook in product development for the newsfeed. Okay. Um, can you guys maybe just talk about any one of you? Um, let's just start with the transition from high school, the transition to, to Milken, uh, from Milken to, to Berkeley specifically. Um, and maybe let's just start by saying why you chose that, that first year, like what made you choose Berkeley? And then what was it like, you know, just sort of generally, what was your Berkeley experience like? And then we can get into any specifics about academics and social life, anything else you want to share, but anyone can just jump in. Or I'll pick on you. Elliot, why'd you choose Berkeley? Tell us about like that path for you. Uh, yeah, for sure. So um, when I was deciding on a school, one of the main factors was just affordability. Um, Cal was a very affordable school with a very high quality educational system. And I thought it would be a good fit for me personally, mainly for that reason, but also because the campus is really pretty. And I also wanted to study both STEM and social sciences. And I knew Cal excelled in both divisions. so. That was a huge reason why I ended up choosing Cal. 
And then um, also because of like the strong Greek life and also um, the Jewish community and all the different opportunities for that at Cal, um, those were definitely the main reasons behind my choice. Aaron Solomon, you want to talk about that? Yeah, so I was deciding between a few schools. Um, I chose Cal because it has the strongest undergrad environmental school, College of Natural Resources, um, in the country. So that was the big draw. I also had a connection to Berkeley because one of my sisters went there and so did my mom and I was born in the Bay Area. So I knew a lot about it. I spent a lot of time here. Um, my transition was, I don't, did you mention something about transition or was that a different question? Yeah. Yeah, my transition was pretty decent actually. Uh, coming from a 600 person high school to a 40,000 person public university is not as scary as you might think. Um, there are a lot of really great ways to build small communities within the giant scary thing that is Cal. Um, and also just like having thousand person lectures begins to feel really natural in like two or three weeks. Um, so it was a pretty seamless transition for me. I think that for me, my transition was definitely more difficult. Um, I was used to having personalized attention from all of my teachers at Milken. Like I loved spending time with my advisory and um, Mr. Martin, I don't know if you, he was there. Like I loved being able to like crack jokes with him. Um, and at Berkeley, I didn't find that right away, um, but I thought there was like a lot, actually an overwhelming amount of resources that were dedicated to making me feel comfortable. And I'm happy to talk about them, which ranged from free tutoring to the Jewish community to many different other resources. Um, so I, although it's like not the most seamless, it wasn't the most seamless for me. I thought that I had enough resources. So if you're, this will probably be like my theme throughout the evening, but if you're willing to advocate your, for yourself, and you're able to, Berkeley's an amazing school. Um, why Berkeley? For three reasons. Um, echoing off of Elliot's point about, how, I think maybe Aaron commented about this too, Berkeley's the best school to go to for almost any field that you're interested in, whether it be business, it has a top 10 business program. For If you're interested in law, you have access to a top 10 law school. If you're interested in, it's, if you're interested in computer science, statistics, like it has the highest ranked programs um, on a graduate level, which means that the, you're learning from the best in their field. So that's that was like one factor. I want to go to the best school I possibly could. The second factor was the Jewish community. I heard a lot of concerning things about the Jewish community at Berkeley, but I went and I couldn't say that I feel more at home. I have a sister who's at Berkeley right now and she like spends her days, afternoons, and evenings um, at Hillel and Chabad, as did I. Um, and third, I think the factor was like proximity and access. So um, Berkeley was far away enough that I had to commit to coming home. It, was, it couldn't be an instantaneous decision. And I felt like I could grow as a person uh, being far enough away from home. However, I could go door to door in four hours um, flying. So I thought it's, there's also a really great Berkeley community in LA. There wasn't one time that I went to the airport that I didn't see a friend from Berkeley, um, <laughs> like flying back and forth and that, and like from the Jewish community and I'd always sit next to them on like my Southwest flight. So I think that like that, I think those were the reasons why I initially chose Berkeley. I guess, yeah, I can chime in. Um, I think Berkeley is such a unique environment, not only because it's so huge, but the simultaneous and sort of like weird juxtaposition that you're able to feel like you're in such a small community just because there are so, 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 so many activities between like clubs or sororities, fraternities, or the Jewish community, or even like your classes that you can make small communities within this larger environment. So you can feel like, there's like, you know, nobody at Cal, but at the same time run into like seven different people if you're on like south side of campus, which happens all the time. Um, and I, I just love that, that it, I, it was very similar to Milken that you can be in a bunch of different things at the same time while still kind of being um, 
committed to your studies, obviously you need to be able to have good time management skills and being able to also put your mental health and physical health first, which is something that I think myself and a lot of other Berkeley students struggle with, but it definitely gives you a lot of opportunity to make friends and be in different communities. Um, and I guess like why I chose Berkeley, Berkeley has been, it was my dream school ever since like I was little because my dad lived in the Bay Area and he was like Berkeley, Berkeley. So I love, I learned to love it as I got to know it. Um, and it's just, it has an amazing, obviously, um, like Danielle said, there's amazing things in every single field that like between professors and resources. And I'm interested in public policy and maybe law. So we, obviously I worked at the law school and that wouldn't have happened if like, if it was a different school where they have undergraduates working in all these different subfields of law. Um, so there's just so many different ways to kind of get your feet wet in different um, fields. So I think that's super unique about Berkeley as well. Um, I want to just jump in and let any kids ask any, any students ask any questions that is that are on your mind or I can keep asking questions, but anything that um, you guys want to jump in on, feel free. Does anyone have any questions? Kayla? Yeah, I just, um, I, from um, what I've like heard of Berkeley um, is that it's just very competitive. So I just want to know what you guys have to say on that. And if you guys think it's, it's just been very difficult for you or not. Yeah, um, I can certainly speak to that. Um, being in the business program, it's a competitive environment. There's no way to deny that. But the way I saw it was I wanted to be on a campus where I felt motivated and excited to do my best academically and within my career where that was the focus and that was the sentiment on campus rather than let's say Greek life or other distractions. Because when you have an environment like that to cultivate your drive, it doesn't end at Cal. For example, I've been recruiting for a new job for a few months now before I began at Facebook. And I actually studied via Zoom with my good friend from Haas. And every week we did a two hour session together, grinding and studying and prepping for interviews. And it was nice to have that Berkeley mentality come back of just pushing to do your best and be the best um, with a friend to support you and be there for you. So I see so many positives in being in a very academically rigorous environment like Berkeley. Anyone else want to, Aaron, do you want to jump in? Yeah, so um, being College of Natural Resources, it's kind of known as the hippie college. We're not that competitive, but I have noticed the um, the very, the general sense of, of, if not competition, then, you know, proving that you can do all of the things. Uh, you know, I know people who literally work 15 hours a day um, because they are in 16 STEM units and also have two jobs. Um, and I think that, while there is something really wonderful, or I think there's something really valuable about the intense atmosphere of Berkeley that gets you motivated, I really want to encourage you that if you do come to Berkeley, seek out the communities that will also support you and push you to do less. Um, one thing that I love about living in my co-op is that we have this mentality of like, don't push yourself too hard because the, it's not worth the mental health stuff. My friend is doing her thesis on grind culture. Um, and it's a really interesting paper because Berkeley students have a really intense grind culture. And the reason that I'm saying that is like, I think that Berkeley is a great school to come to for academics and for pushing yourself. And you should come to there, um, should come here with that in mind, but come here also preparing yourself to find those communities where you can like be, you know, imperfect and allowing yourself to exist in those spaces be that's going to be really valuable. And it has been for me. Great. Any other, anything to add there? Any other, what other questions are on your mind? Um, okay, yeah, Sarah. Um, yeah, so uh, my, my question is kind of long, but I'll try to condense it a little. Um, so like obviously Milken is a pretty small school and obviously Berkeley is a very large school. So my question is, is the size like overwhelming both in a sense of like kind of just like 
being in a place with like so many people in one school and then also kind of in terms of like ac like academics like are the classes huge like can you interact with like professors like more intimately like is there opportunity for research like that all that kind of stuff mm -hmm. yeah yeah oh that like I love that question <laughs> I uh because I was worried about that too um so there are a bunch of different solves. Um, my short answer is yes, it's overwhelming, but absolutely you have the opportunity to develop relationships with professors. So, um, and I can show you like how that's manifested for me too, like after graduation for Berkeley. So for example, I came to Berkeley and I was overwhelmed. Um, I wanted to make my classroom smaller. So what I did is I applied to the business school where I had like a max 40 people per class. And so I got to have a private, like a milk in size about private ed school education at Berkeley. And there's lots of majors and lots of opportunities for you to do that and have your classes like be cut down in size. In terms of research, I starting in my sophomore year did research with a professor every semester and also during some summers. Um, and those research opportunities were literally as easy as sending an email. Um, they try like it was a going up to a professor at office hours. Hey, do you have some research that I can do? And I got paid for it. And they found if they couldn't pay me for it, they found me funding. Um, those relationships with professors um, really brought me far. So evidence there's been like let's say like three pieces of evidence of that. Um, after I graduated, I applied to um, one of the prestigious fellowships called a Fulbright scholarship, which required, uh, I think, like between three to five letters of recommendation. And I had like 10 professors to ask. Like, <laughs> I had so many professors that were like ready and rearing to write a letter of recommendation for me because I like went to office hours and like talked to them and developed relationships with them. Um, and I applied for the scholarship and got it. Um, after the Fulbright, I like went to Cambridge. This is like two years after graduation from Berkeley, by the way. And I went back to my professors from Berkeley and I was like, please, will you write other letters of recommendation? And I had too many letters of recommendation. I just applied to JD PhD program this past year, three years, almost four out of Berkeley. And I had like a required like three letters of recommendation for law school and like five for some PhD program. And then some like through the application process some universities have asked me for additional letters of recommendation and I have like professors being like can I write another letter for you like can I help you so like <laughs> and like they're like professors like so I think that they're absolutely there's like tons of resources for research um I'm also happy to talk to anyone here afterwards if they're curious about research fellowships graduate school I know there's other people on here too who've like thought about those options as well so I hope that answers your question. That's amazing. Congrats. It's amazing. Cool. Very cool for you. Um, Aaron. Sure. I'll add a few things from my experience. Um, you know, I both on the social side and the class side, on the laying on the on the academic side for me personally, I did two majors at Cal, um, which was definitely very doable. Um, they were in the same college. One was poli sci, which political science, which is you know, the study of government and is, I think the largest at the time was like the largest or among the largest majors. We regularly had like, even the advanced classes were like many hundreds of students per lecture. Um, so that was a lot. Um, the professors made themselves available. You know, you could go to office hours, which are, you know, a couple, you know, a few hours a week where you could show up and sign up for an appointment and really connect. But for any of those really big classes, you also have um, a discussion section, which is mandatory which are you know, taught by a graduate student, which is like a PhD candidate, who's still like really has a lot of expertise in this field. And then you have like a 15 or a 20 person discussion session. So that's, that's your chance to make those big classes really ex more accessible and to get the more direct assistance that you might be looking for or might be used to. Um, but then I also had Spanish as another major and in Spanish, like the class sizes were actually usually smaller than I'd say what a Milken class would be. You know, I had classes of like a dozen people on a number of occasions. And that really was like something that I sought out. And a lot of the smaller um, majors, there are a number of smaller majors like that if you're looking, or opportunities for classes like that, if you are looking for, for that type of a balance um, if, of your experience. Uh, I'd argue that um, 
in terms of from like a social adjustment side of thing, at least for me, you know, I was involved with um, two, two student organizations. Um, one was Mali United Nations, which is something I did in, in high school and was really a nice like um, group of, of both friends and something that was an extension, something I was passionate about in, in high school. Uh, and I was part of something called a professional fraternity, which is for people who share like a professional interest. So it's social, but also in this case, it was people with an interest in foreign affairs and in government type careers. And, you know, we support each other as we were working towards, you know, future career goals and, but also it was just a nice group of friends. Um, my, like, my dorm friends were actually, I'm still close with to this day, you know, many, many years after we started our first year, I just, one of my friends from the dorms had a baby yesterday and we were all in a group chat being excited and connecting. We all have gone to each other's weddings and like, that was another fantastic, like foundational social group that, you know, I wouldn't say all 30 of us on that floor were be, like besties, but you know, a lot of us really did stay to be like a great um, social fabric throughout college and then past it, even though we were, you know, totally different majors, totally different walks of life, totally different career aspirations. That was like that common first year of college theme. And, uh, you know, these are all different ways that you like find those more personalized, smaller communities and make them your own. Awesome, thank you. Talia? Yeah, um, I wanted to turn you guys on to a few opportunities that I wish I would have known about as a freshman. Um, Daniela was speaking um, towards research things and it's even easier to kind of um, find out about research because there's um, a program called UROP, which stands for Undergraduate Research Apprenticeship Program. So you can do that as early as like your first semester of freshman year, I think. Um, and those have opportunities in like at literally every single field that you could possibly be interested in. Um, they have different opportunities to meet professors. Maybe your first semester is a little too early, um, but definitely your second semester, or even your sophomore year, when you like get more experience, they have a lot of applications and it is super competitive. But if you like email the professor, or like write a really good personal statement, um, there's definitely a lot of space for those. And that kind of allows you to build your portfolio and learn what you're interested in and make those early on connections with professors. That'll set you up really, really well for any letters and recommendation that you need written for programs, internships, or like graduate programs in the future. So that's a really, really good one. I recommend you guys write down. Good to know. Elliot? Yeah, so I think I've had a pretty different experience than most people here just being in STEM instead of being in like business or the social sciences. And I will say my classes are like frequently 2000 people in lecture and you can't meet your professors. You can't really get letters of recommendation and it gets pretty tough. But what you have to do with those opportunities is really to like talk of your graduate student instructors more so than your actual professors. Um, I haven't really had any accessible professors in data science. Econ's been a bit easier, but data science really, like you can't really get letters of rec from any of your professors, even if you show up to office hours, because they just won't remember you. Um, that being said, talking to your GSIs, they'll get you letters of rec and they'll really be there for you to help you guide um, through all of your classes and really uh, just to succeed all around. Um, and then, yeah, I also currently teach like a 2000, person class at Cal uh, data eight. And um, just being part of that process has also just like really shown me how tough it is to be an instructor in STEM at Cal and also has exposed me to some of the best ways to really reach out to instructors, which is to talk to the undergrads and the GSIs. Elliot, you didn't apply in STEM, did you? I actually applied as poli sci and yeah. then I got to Cal and decided to change things up and go for econ and data science. And how, how hard is it to make that kind of change? So easy. Um, I took poli sci one and poli sci five my first semester and I decided that poli sci wasn't for me. So I instantly just took data eight. After and After all those poli sci essays I read of yours? <laughs> yeah, I wrote like, uh, just for context, I applied to like 25 schools and Ms. Kierman was with, with me through all of those. And I wrote like every essay about poli sci. And I totally just like changed things up my freshman year. So that's really yeah. not that's what college is all about. That's good. Yeah, for sure. And I also will say it's really easy to get jobs without letters of rec from the Cal STEM departments. Uh, just being like a data science major, it was really easy for me to get interviews, 
even without connections or anything else. So that's also like a really huge perk of point of Cal. Yeah. I just wanted to like kind of hammer home what Elliot said about uh, graduate students. Um, I'm currently doing, I'm working on a research project of my own with a graduate student who I did research for last semester. She's working on her doctoral. She's, she's uh, working to get her doctoral degree and is doing research about ranching and climate change. And she was like, do you wanna come on and be the first author on, author on a literature review that we can get published? Mm -hmm. um, and it's like, yes, let's do that. And those kind of opportunities where you are working really intimately with someone and having um, that kind of like being able to be a first author and really getting to pilot your own research is a lot more possible when you're working on a grad student's research, um, working in a lab that a grad student is piloting. One of my friends did that in an insect lab that someone that a uh, GSI that I had was running and like she got these amazing opportunities and got to like spearhead part of the research. So like if you really want to take an active role in research, um, don't only talk to your professors about research, talk to your grad students and see what they're doing because they might need help too and you can do a lot more with them. And they're also amazing connections. Erin, can you just Aaron, can you just explain a little bit about what you're studying in that world? Because I feel like a lot, a lot, of, a lot of high school kids would have any exposure or know that that even exists. Yeah. So I came to Cal. I'm a city boy. Um, I now love farming. <laughs> um, I love agroecological practices. Um, I took one class and it just made me fall in love with how we are going to make our food system sustainable. We're draining our aquifers. Um, and I got really involved in the agroecological community at Cal and I started doing research on the conservation crisis that is currently happening in Siskiyou County, California, which is with this doctoral candidate who I've mentioned. Um, and I just, I put in my hours when I was doing my work with her and, you know, I, I always reached out to her and made sure that I had that connection. And at the end of last semester, when I was working on this, she reached out to me and said, Hey, would you want to continue working on this project? And I was totally enthusiastic. I'm like, yes, I'd love to do more. And we got to talking and we decided that the best way that I could do more was to actually write a literature review that, um, about the topic that she's working on. She's looking at how climate change and conservation crises are affecting ranchers, um, in the Western United States. Um, this is a topic I never had any interest in, but an opportunity to research to be the principal author on a literature review is incredible and not something to turn down. Um, so I jumped into something that I am totally knew very little about, um, was something a little bit, seemed kind of boring to me, honestly. I'm not much into ranching. I don't care much about cows. Um, but like, I'm really invested now. Like I can tell you guys so much about what ranchers are doing when a drought comes along, uh, way more than I ever wanted to know. And I'm so grateful for that opportunity because now like, A, it's a, and it's a great thing to put on your resume, but B, it's like, it shows you how the world of academia works. Let's you know if you wanna be in the world of academia future later on. And it builds those connections. Like I know that I have someone who I can get the most solid um, letter of rec from later down the line if I need it. That's awesome. Talia, did you wanna say something? Yeah, sorry. I also want to do a quick plug. Um, if you are interested in government slash public policy slash possibly poli sci major, there are like, I can list four off the top of my head things that are, they're not study abroad, but they're called, I don't know if they have a specific name, but there one is called UCDC and it's um, University of California in DC. So you go a semester towards um, to, to DC um, and you get an internship and they help you with that stuff. There's also Cal in Sacramento that um, they help you with internships in Sacramento, local government in California. Uh, Aaron's doing Cal and Sac, it's awesome. And you don't even, it's not even just public policy. It's like, there's so many different things. And there's uh, Cal and local government where you get like a $5,000 grant to work over the summer in local government. And there's literally so many opportunities that Cal can help you find internships and find research things and either pay you slash send you to those places to do those things. I did um, UCDC, sadly it was virtual, but I had the opportunity to work with the State Department and that couldn't have been possible if I, I like, um, if I didn't do the program. And it's just, they really, really help you kind of hone in on things and they are, it's just a great opportunity. It's like, you're kind of like, I don't know how to get an internship in this or this sector, like these programs. I don't know if they have them in other fields because I'm poli sci obviously, but um, it, they're, they're such amazing programs. So I would highlight those. Great, Elliot. Yeah, just like going on a bit of a tangent here, I think joining clubs is really important and I can't reiterate how important that is as a freshman. Um, when you get to Cal, you're gonna try to find a community and try to find resources that can really guide you in the right direction. And it's tough to do that without actually being in a club. 
So I joined to meet my freshman year and I'm now the president of the organization. And um, it's really helped me find internships and really find a community during my time at Berkeley. And actually, um, Emily's brother and uh, Daniela's sister were both in to meet with me. And just getting to know people like their siblings and other Jewish students at Cal. Can you just Harvard. describe what to meet is real quick? Yeah, sure. So to meet is a business club that does consulting with Israeli organizations. Um, we also do STEM consulting. So helping Israeli companies with programming and creating apps. So if you're interested in anything ranging from like business and econ to CS, uh, to meet and other business clubs are a great opportunity to get involved. Mm -hmm. I just want to add on to that. Um, so I'm living in New York right now. So to meet has a over the summer fellowship in Israel where you can go to Israel and like work for an Israeli startup. And I'm living in New York right now with someone that I met on the Tamid Fellowship in Israel. Um, so these are like college connections that I made at Berkeley that really do last a lifetime. Um, and I just had, I also was on the Tamid um, Executive Board um, as the National Director of Education. So there's like also opportunities for like larger leadership. There's like a pro board, lots of like opportunities through organizations. And then I just wanna add two other organizations, if that's okay, if we're, um, so I was involved with um, things on like having to do with Jewish life and then not Jewish life on campus. Um, in terms of Jewish life, I was involved with Hillel. I worked as a director of first impression. So I was like a resource allocator. Like if you came in, you were Jewish and like you wanted something to do, I helped point you in the right direction. I was also the president of Hall for Hunger and we baked challah and sold it for proceeds for different, uh, from a zone, which is like a Jewish poverty organization. Um, I go to Chabad for Shabbat. I was also really involved with and still am the Berkeley Institute for Jewish Law and Israel Studies, which is at the law school. Mm -hmm. um, I was an undergraduate fellow there and at Berkeley Law, which is like a top law school. Um, and I had the opportunity to like network with professors and stay connected to Israel in a way that wasn't like Israel advocacy. And I thought that was like really amazing. Um, I, outside of the Jewish community, I wrote for the Daily Californian, um, both for their blog and for their news beat. Um, I can talk about that sort of, and like thought that was a really welcoming community. I also led a startup accelerator. So I like to if you're interested in like startup entrepreneurship and technology, I led Free Ventures, which is a student run startup accelerator. We got money from the top venture capital firms in Silicon Valley, and we got to fund and invest in student startups. So if you're, so like, and like those things I was involved with throughout my time at Cal, which was awesome. Um, yeah. Daniela, yeah. can you just mention real quick, um, the process of getting into Haas as a Berkeley student? Of course. So the process of getting into Haas is, is business school. Yes, the biz, Haas is Haas business school. Um, you, there's like Haas undergraduate general education requirements, which I think are two math courses, which is essentially AP Calculus AB and AP Calculus BC. There's a statistics requirement as well as uh, two reading and writing requirements and an undergraduate business, like one business requirement. So it's like, I think a total of six classes. Um, so they take those classes, essays, um, and put them all together. You apply in the fall of your sophomore year and you hear back the spring of your sophomore year. People say it's a really competitive process and they stress out a lot about it. My, in my personal opinion, it's kind of clear who gets in and who doesn't. And it's pretty, as some people might say against, like might not disagree with me, but I think that if you're involved, if you wanna take a leadership role, there are really concrete steps you can take to get into Haas. And, um, like I was admitted to other business programs as a high school student and like I was running the risk of getting into Haas or not. And I think it was definitely a risk worth taking because I think that if like you're willing to put in the time and work hard um, your first two years, it's definitely doable. Is that helpful? <laughs> definitely. And okay. um, Emily, what do you want to say? Um, few things to say. Uh, first thing, uh, I just want to say 
if you don't know what you want to do in college and you're hearing about us going through all these clubs and getting, I don't know, just knowing what our career path is, please don't stress out because I had no idea what I wanted to do. Um, and I also wasn't someone who was in every club at all. Like I was really focused on my personal in, uh, development, um, really involved in Chabad and just making good friends and staying, having a very strong mental health in college. And I didn't do everything. Um, albeit I did go the non-traditional route and transfer from USC to Haas. Um, so I had to do some things to get through the door there, but don't feel like if you come to Berkeley, you need to be involved in everything. Cause I don't think that's the case for everyone. Um, and then I also want to add, um, oh yeah. So I was on the track to go to USC Marshall and I'm not going to make this like a whole sent statement about USC versus Berkeley, but I just want to say. Haas is an incredible program if you have a strong desire to be directly recruited by the best consulting firms, investment banks, or tech companies in the country. Um, there's something I wasn't aware of, which was the target school system. I don't think it's written in paper, but it's something my older brother and like my older friends taught me about, which is that these top firms like the Goldman Sachs, the Googles, um, they only go to a few schools to directly recruit out of undergrad. For example, I worked for Deloitte Consulting and they didn't recruit directly from USC. They only recruited from Haas and from Stanford. So just be aware that sometimes it's nice to go to these types of schools. And also you don't have to be in the business program. You can be an econ and still get directly recruited um, because they do have like a great name for being recruited from these top firms. And it they really open the door for you in many ways that you just can't have otherwise. So Emily, while we're on the topic, Brandon asked a question since you brought up USC and you have that experience. I don't want, like she said, I don't want to make this about the Marshall call and you'll have to come back Brandon for the USC um, call, but um, he's asking about how you compare the connections or the network, I think, between Marshall and Haas. Yeah. So my older brother went to USC Marshall, had a great time there learned a lot and landed a great career. He had to hustle though, because there are so many students. Um, it's an incredibly prestigious program. I personally actually wanted a smaller program. And from what I know, the class size at Marshall is significantly larger. And when I say class, I mean the graduating class than the grad graduating class at Haas. Um, I think there were 2000 kids who graduated my brother's year and I could totally be off, but that was a large amount. And then there were about 300 my year at Haas. So less competition as far as looking for a career. Um, and then you wrote connections wise. Again, um, I think that they're phenomenal from either school. I really don't think that USC has that much of a leg up in regards to LA. Um, but I do think that Haas is great when it comes from having a global name and global presence. So if you don't want to know if you want to be in LA, you want to go to Palo Alto, Silicon Valley, go to Haas. You want to be in New York, Israel. Um, it just has a widely recognized brand. Um, and I believe Haas is ranked top five undergrad programs in the country for business, which is pretty high. Sorry, really quickly before Elliot goes, there's a program called the Global Management Program that I didn't personally take part in, but I know a lot of people did. Um, it's like you study in London for a semester and then you go to the Haas School of Business. I don't know if the applications are closed, but if you haven't heard about it, it's a really cool program. Um, yeah, for like international studies. I don't know exactly what it is, but it has to do with Haas and it's like really cool. If this is, just to jump in really quickly, if, if this is helpful, I've never, I've had every single summer internship, I've had multiple offers just from having the Haas name or the Berkeley name. I've never had trouble finding a job. Like, I think that like, if those are like myths that, or concerns, like I would not have them. Yeah, and okay, I'm gonna jump in here really quickly. Um, I didn't go to Haas, I'm actually an econ. And I do wanna say, even if you don't get into Haas, econ's like a really strong alternative. And I have gone recruited by Deloitte and JP Morgan, Amazon, a bunch of other firms just with an econ degree, not with Haas. So you don't have to like stress too much about not getting in because there's a bunch of really strong alternatives for that too. Um, Aaron, do you have a question? Aaron Kermani? 
Um, could anyone speak on the like social life at Berkeley? Like how active is it? Is it more dead? Um, just like general stuff. Can anyone just talk about that? Anyone jump in? Yeah, um, social life in regards to like Greek life, I guess I can speak to. I joined a sorority, had a lot of fun for a bit of time, and then I realized it wasn't for me and left the sorority and still kept all my friends. Um, so that's kind of what I loved about Berkeley is the focus wasn't on Greek life. You can join and have fun, but people didn't really care or value you so much based on what house you were in. It was more so what ambitions you had and what kind of person you were, not to sound cheesy. Um, and then I found most of my best friends through Chabad and Hillel, which was really great. Yeah, um, I guess social life was what freaked me out the most about coming to Cal, you know, very, you know, it felt very unstructured. How was I going to meet people? Um, you meet people in a lot of varieties of ways. I met friends through classes. I met friends through clubs. Some of my closest friends are people who I work in Berkeley Student Farms with. We were all hanging out last night. Um, we're all vaccinated, it's all good. Um, just hanging out and, you know, talking about the farm and dancing, it was great. Um, I've met people through my co-op. My co-op is one of the most wonderful communities I've ever been a part of. Uh, really intense community, you know, living with 40, 50 people in one house all at the same time. Sharing kitchen can be a lot, but it's a lot of fun. Um, you know, you also just meet people through uh, uh, through other mutual friends. Um, like one of my best friends is actually someone who I met through someone else who like reached out to me on Facebook just before uh, we all came to Cal. Um, and like reaching out and like trying to make those connections and just like jumping in is probably the best thing you can do. I remember there was one time where I saw a picture of, where someone sent me a picture of someone who they knew like a profile picture being like, this person's looking to start like a queer punk band. And I literally text this person, I've never heard them. I messaged them on face and I'm like, dude, you play drums, I play guitar, let's start a queer punk band. It fell through, but they ended up being a really good friend of mine. Um, and it's just like, jump in, what's the worst that's gonna happen? You can make amazing connections. I have three best friends from Berkeley um, and they're, they all aren't friends with each other. Um, and like they're from three different places so one was my freshman year college roommate she's my best friend to this day um, she's great I have another best friend who I met through this startup accelerator program that I ran um, she like studied Buddhist studies um, and then like the third best friend I met through the Jewish community um, so I think that like you can, I think what's really special about social life at Berkeley is that you can meet so many friends through so many different avenues. And like, it's not just like in your major on your freshman floor or um, through the Jewish community. It's like all of them. And like my freshman year, I like, I met some, I, I don't know, I loved like, and also international friends too. Like I did my master's degree at Cambridge in England. Um, and it was really cool that I could like go to London for the weekend and spend time with like my friend from, who's like from London, from Cal. So I really, I don't know, different social places and spaces. Mm -hmm. um, I have like two things to say about this. Um, first of all, there's one group of like orgs that I don't think has been mentioned. Um, there are these things at Cal called professional fraternities, um, which is not affiliated with Greek life, but they're um, professional organizations that are called fraternities for some reason. I'm not really sure why, but they're co-ed, most of them. Um, there's like law and medicine and business. And I think a few other things. I'm in a pre-law fraternity, which um, is where I met the majority of my friends because those are small groups that, yeah, like um, it's called Cappy. Um, that, I think they also have one at UCLA and Michigan. So if you're going to one of those, they have it there too. Um, those are really cool organizations where it's not just social building, but it's also like a lot of professional building and you can make connections with um, other like jobs or like, like resume cover letter workshop and buildings. Those are really important. Um, and also like I got three different job offers because of like people referring me from these kind of organizations. So those are, it's a super great way to kind of get job offers and um, 
internship offers and stuff like that, which are super cool. And I think it's also really, really important to know, especially if you're going to Cal, that kind of echoing what other people say, it's okay to have different friends from different groups. Like you don't need them all to mesh in one group. Like it's okay to have multiple friends. Like you're not being less of a friend to one group if you're friends with other people, which is I think is really different than your experience probably at Milken because you probably have your own clicks. I don't know how bad the clicks is still at Milken, but it was pretty bad when I went to school there. Um, but like, it's okay to have a lot of friends um, in different organizations. I think that's really cool. If it definitely builds you more as a person to have different experiences from different groups of friends. Yeah, um, I totally agree with everything Talia said. And I also wanna address uh, Brandon's comment in the chat. Um, I don't think Cal is too big to navigate because there are so many different places where you can meet people. And those smaller spaces really help you navigate the larger school. And I would say just like being in a frat, which I joined my sophomore year, being in a consulting club, uh, being in Chabad and Hillel, and also being in like the ASUC and other organizations really helps you just meet other like-minded people that can help you uh, sort of move towards your goals and navigate the campus. Um, online, if you guys start online, it will be a little rougher to actually navigate the school. And just like things being online, it's going to be harder to actually like look through things and to meet people. But just like joining organizations, submitting applications and putting yourself out there is um, just extremely important. It really helps navigate the school. If they're starting in the fall, they're not going to start online, I don't believe. Depends on their classes. I mean, like they could end up just having all of their classes online if they take like more impacted majors and that sort of thing. But the discussions are in person, so definitely utilize those. Thanks. Kayla, you have a question? Yeah, I have two. One is, did any of you um, come into Berkeley your freshman year undecided? And do any of you know about like um, the freshman like semester program? And like, do you have anything to say about it, good or bad? I came in undecided. I changed my major five times. I was like, I'm going to do art history. And then I like was pre-med for a semester. And then I did like this externship program where I got to like learn from a plastic surgeon. I was like, just kidding. I stayed in the operating room. And then I was like, oh, maybe I should study political science. And like, I changed my major a ton of times um, and graduated in four years um, with a major and two minors. So like, you're good there. Um, in terms of the freshman semester program, do you mean like, like fresh, like can, like it's like F. Um, F yeah, I, I think it's called. I feel oh, like, FPF. Yeah, oh, FPF. Yeah. That one. Um, I wasn't. Were any of you in FPF? I wasn't in FPF, but I can speak a little bit to it. But I think someone who's in it. Should yeah, yeah. It. Even if you weren't in it, I just. Yeah, I guess just, just any perspectives you have from it, from friends maybe that were in it. I think that it's like totally fine. Like you just don't get priority for your first semester of classes. And then from then on, you're sailing. Like I think that like Isn't the first it? semester was like. I thought it was like a different set of classes that you have the opportunity to take. It's also like, like a different set. Yeah. So it's not like but, you don't get priority for classes. It's more like they give you a different set of classes with different teachers and they're smaller is what I know about it. They're also it's less available to be taken. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like one semester and like, I don't think it really impacts holistically like your college experience. Um, Ethan? Yeah, I, you, you guys may have touched on it, but I just want, if, if it's okay, can I have uh, more detail into, at least for the freshman year or what you've experienced beyond the workload and how you've managed the, what's been advertised to be extreme workload at UC Berkeley. Go ahead, jump in. Yeah, I can chime in on this one. Um, being a data science major, um, it's really tough. Um, we have to take a lot of really hard coding classes and generally speaking, they're the most time intensive. And during some of the harder schedules I've had, I uh, uh, like very commonly spent like 16 hours a day working and it was really insane. But what I will say is just don't spread yourself too thin. 
Um, if you get involved in too many organizations and take too many technical classes, your mental health will falter. And for me, like I waited until that point until I really changed my schedule and my life around. I really like limited the amount of technical classes I took and also um, limited the amount of organizations I was a part of. It's really just a matter of making sure you don't spread yourself too thin, committing to the organizations that you're involved in and really planning out your schedule in advance so you don't take more than like three technicals a semester. I would just say that it also depends on what your major is. So STEM is definitely like super, super difficult. Like he's not exaggerating when people say they do 16 hours of work a day. Um, I would say my experience was a little different. Um, I really wanted to get involved in a lot of things. Like I had a part-time job and I did a lot of organizations because that's what I was super interested. I really wanted to get involved in as many things as possible. Um, and my workload wasn't as intense. If you're more humanities slash LNS, um, that's a trend that I've seen that STEM people have a lot more work this hours wise. Cause um, a lot of like social science is like reading. And if you're like, if you did AP lit in Lang, you like know how to read passages that quickly and kind of get the main point. So on that side, there's, it's not as crazy. Like it's not, don't be like discouraged by like thinking you're never gonna have a social life or never gonna be able to breathe because all you're doing is like studying. That's not true. There is a lot of wiggle room with the amount of work you do, but obviously make sure to study for your exams and do midterms. And it's definitely not like um, Milken where you have like assignments that are due every day in class or like sometimes like some classes have like discussion posts once a week or quizzes once a week, but like that's probably the extent of like weekly assignments that you're probably gonna do um, or like problem sets. I know they have those that they're probably do like once every couple of weeks, um, but don't be like too overwhelmed because not every major has like 12 hours of work a day. I just wanted to say, you know, a little bit of a twist on that question. You know, one of the amazing things about Cal is that it's so, there are so many excellent academic departments and opportunities for you to dive into material that you've never been exposed to before. And to really like when you arrive somewhere like Cal and you could say it about some of the other big universities, uh, like UCs, like to how important it is, or it was for me at least, to like take time to experiment, to take some classes in areas that I'd never heard of before, or I wasn't really familiar with. Um, like it, not necessarily these things didn't turn into ma new majors for me necessarily, but they exposed me to like new skills and new fields um, in a way that um, like is like really shouldn't be overlooked about one of like the amazing parts of, of this university. And you, you'll see it as you like through your friends talking through like outside of class about what they're studying and their life experience uh, and the, through the internships that they're getting when they're studying these other things. But it really is like, you know, that'll be my takeaway for you, like the, the abundance of opportunity at this university. Um, and especially in your first year, use those general education classes to like go out there and try something new. And uh, I hope that it will be a great opportunity to open your minds. Amazing. Just in the, just for the sake of time, um, you guys asked really good questions. Is there um, any, for the, for our, our alumni, esteemed alumni, anything um, you want to add that maybe hasn't been said yet or that they should really know about Berkeley um, for seniors who are making decisions and juniors who are doing research? I think this is my pitch for Berkeley. Berkeley isn't the easiest school to go to. It's not near home. It's not like the small, you're not going to get individualized attention on day one. But if you want to grow as a person, as an individual, and be pushed and to advocate for yourself, to learn new things, to try to look at things from a different perspective, um, to hear from people, from student parents, from um, individuals who aren't like you, then go to Berkeley. Like if you want to like be comfortable, sit within your own, in your own cozy community, um, like then don't. Like, I think like that was like my sort of thing. Like I wanted to be pushed and shoved and like that has only paid so many dividends 
for me in my life now. And I don't think I would be like nearly as like, I like, I'm like proud of the work that I've done at Berkeley. I'm proud of like who I am afterwards. And I don't think I'd be the same person if I hadn't gone there. Yeah, I totally agree with everything you just said. And I wanted to take that a little bit further just to talk about um, anti-Semitism at Cal, why it's prevalent and how to deal with it. Um, anti-Semitism definitely is present at Cal. Um, I personally have experienced it multiple times and it can get a little bit challenging to deal with, but the Jewish community at Cal is one of the strongest communities I've ever witnessed in my life. Um, just being on the board of Hillel and Chabad, you really get exposure to a lot of the different Jewish perspectives on campus. Uh, and not everyone agrees on the top on the subject of anti-Semitism and anti-Israel activity. And just being able to see a variety of perspectives and also being part of a community that is so resilient against anti-Semitic attacks really just introduces you to the real world and to fight for the Jewish people, not just at Cal, but also beyond your experiences in college. Um, I really got trained to advocate for the Jewish people at Berkeley and um, I think that's something you all will gain at Cal, despite the prevalent anti-Semitism. I just want to note really quickly um, that I was involved in the Jewish community really heavily my freshman year, and then I got involved into other things, and I kind of fell out, which is also totally okay. You guys don't, it's not a requirement for a Jewish student at Berkeley to be involved in the Jewish community. Um, and if, obviously, if you're not really that involved, I haven't experienced any anti-Semitism just because I'm not really involved in those communities. Um, even like the Institute that I'm involved in, it's like not really that prevalent because it's obviously at the law school, it's a different um, stage. Um, so anti-Semitism is there, it exists. It exists everywhere to be frank. Um, but if you don't actively seek it or not, not seek it out, but if you're not really actively in those spaces, um, then well, Okay, yeah, Elliot, but I'm, yeah, then it doesn't, it's not as prevalent as a lot of people make out Berkeley to be. Any other last um, plugs, messages, things that, ha anything else that hasn't been said yet? Did it ever affect your social life? The anti-Semitism? Is that your Yeah. Definitely not, no. I'm in the least bit. Yeah, I will say I live, I, I t like 25% of the people I live with are Jews. And I also live in a place that is like very, with, a, with, with the majority opinion is not very, is very anti-Israel, um, I will be frank. Um, and yet still like my friend makes matzo brai every morning um, and wears a Jewish star and you know, um, even in these places where you might be concerned about radical politics, you know, causing anti-Semitism, like a quarter of us are Jewish. Um, and yeah, I, I've never felt that concern at all. Let's end on a good note. Let's end on something exciting, inspirational. Anything else to say? Definitely spend a lot of time on campus. There are so many beautiful places on campus to kind of just sit and read and enjoy lunch. And it's, it's a beautiful campus. I think someone else said that, but it definitely make on campus all as much as you can. Yeah, hiking, there's a lot of hiking. Really yeah. good food in the area, if you're a foodie. <laughs> I I love Berkeley so much that I'm considered, like I was recently admitted to their law school and I'm thinking of spending an additional three years there after spending four. So like, if that's not like a selling point, like, I don't know what it is. Thank yeah. you. Aaron, Elliot, Daniela, Emily, Aaron, Talia, thank you guys so, so much for your time, for taking this hour plus out of your lives and joining us. And for the seniors and juniors, I hope that this was really helpful. I'm sure any of them would be happy to talk to you and I can always pass on their emails or they can put them in the chat. Um, but we really, really appreciate it. You guys are amazing ambassadors for Berkeley and for Milken. So we really appreciate all that you guys are doing. Thank you. Thanks guys for joining. Thank you. Have a good night, everybody. Good to see you all. Thanks y'all. Nice to meet you all. Thank you all. Bye Kayla. Bye.